feeling pretty awkward right now. <laughs> I'm in the living room. Anyway, welcome. My name is Keisha Martin and I'm a licensed therapist. And if you're new and just stopping by, hi and hola. And on this channel, I do my level best to give you some concrete, tangible tools with a dash of humor occasionally, if I do say so myself, that you can use on your journey of self-improvement. So if that's something that you're interested in, then make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. really excited about doing this video for you guys because I recently did a post on Instagram where I asked you if you had questions for a therapist and I got some fantastic questions. So our first question comes from what Lynn says goes. Love that screen name by the way you sound like a boss. Anyway so her question is what's the best way to find a compatible couples therapist? This is a fabulous question. First and foremost whenever you're on the hunt for a therapist you always 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 want to review their profiles thoroughly. And a good resource for that is Psychology Today. Not sponsored by the way, it's just a tool that I'm familiar with, having been a therapist for quite some time. So this is a really easy tool to use because all you gotta do is go to psychologytoday.com and then you enter in your city or your zip code and it will generate a list of therapists in your area. Once that list is generated, you can take your pick, go down the list, you can see a little snippet of a little bit about that therapist. Choose a profile that sparks your interest and then when you click on it, it takes you to their full profile where it talks about their specialty, how long they've been in practice, um, what they offer, all the things. So that's step one. Now, when you're reviewing their profiles, you wanna make sure that they list on there somewhere areas that are a concern for you. So for an example, let's say that you or your partner have a history of alcohol abuse or substance abuse, then you're going to want to see a counselor or a therapist or a psychologist that has that somewhere in their profile. Oftentimes in the profile, it'll link you to the counselor's website where it'll probably give you a lot more information. So that's one thing you can do on your hunt for a therapist. Now, once you've identified a few that you feel like could be a good fit, the next step is to set up a consultation. Most therapists do a consultation over the phone, 15 minutes. You can also usually email them. You're gonna wanna look at this consultation like a mini interview. If you've been on an interview before, you know that you ask questions and they ask you questions and you're just kinda trying to get a feel of whether or not this is gonna be a good fit. So in this case, with regard to couples, what I suggest is that you both consult at the same time or separately. That's not usually a problem, uh, and if it is, then maybe it's not a therapist you want to see. All kidding aside, you want to make sure that you are connecting with whoever you're sharing your problems with, right? It's really important that you have a good relationship with your therapist, because if you don't, then you're not going to get very much out of it. So make sure you keep that in mind on your journey and on your hunt to find the fit for you. All right, moving on. Now, during the consultation, I will tell you and I will encourage you not to sugarcoat anything. You wanna make sure that you're being really clear with the therapist about what you're looking for and what your goals are in therapy as a couple. Now, this is why it's important for each of you to consult either together or separately so that you can express what it is that you feel like you are struggling with in your relationship. Now, based on what you share with the therapist, the therapist could probably see whether or not they feel like they could serve you best. And if not, oftentimes the therapist will refer you to another one or provide you with additional resources that might suit you better. So just keep that in mind when you're on your hunt. Now I'm gonna tell you another way that you can search for a therapist in just a minute. So I just wanted to check in with you guys to see if you yourself had any questions. And if you do, make sure that you comment down below. Also, at the end of this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a poll that I did where I ask you guys about some content that you wanna hear about. And if you think of anything else, then let me know. And I'll be sure to outline that in my scheduling for the videos that I put out for you guys. So don't miss that. All right, let me get back to it. So another thing you can do is just do a Google search. Therapist near me. You might be surprised at how much pops up for you. And then you're gonna go through that same process. You're gonna check out their website, you're gonna see what they have to offer, all the things. Another option you might have is if you know someone close to you that you feel comfortable asking, you know, that has gone to therapy, they might be saying, yeah, my therapist is pretty good gosh, you might wanna go see her. And you know, if that's not a good fit, you know, usually that therapist can refer you to another one. So just think about it. 
I hope that answered your question, what Lynn says goes, more thoroughly than I did on Instagram because you know it's kind of a little hard. I can't even get that together, the whole thing. Yeah, anyway, moving on. Next question comes from Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. So her question is, super excited about this question. And the reason being is because I'm very passionate about destigmatizing mental health for obvious reasons. It's important that we take care of ourselves and we look at our emotional health like we do hygiene. It's something we have to do, okay? Not wait until it's okay? So I've got some really good ones for you. So you wanna stick it out and not miss anything. Right then, misconceptions about therapy. I'm gonna give you four. Now there are a lot, but I'm just gonna give you four because I know you're busy and you got stuff to do. All right, the first misconception that I hear all the time, and if you've watched any of my other videos, I've touched on this before, but you know, in case you missed it, this one you wanna listen to, all right? Number one, I will get advice from a therapist. They'll know what to do and my problems will be solved. Yay me. Woo! This is not true, okay? We're not supposed to give you advice, all right? We're supposed to empower you to be the best version of yourself. And our job is essentially to put ourselves out of a job. So if we're giving you advice, you might become reliant on us, which is counterproductive to the whole counseling process. A good analogy that I like to use to address this particular misconception is that counselors are supposed to be like navigators, okay? You're in the driver's seat, you're in control, you decide at the end how you get to where you gotta go. The navigator tells you, okay, well, this is this way and this is that way and this is this way and I see this and I see this and I see this. And there might be an obstacle ahead or a detour, right? So we can see things sometimes that the driver can't because the driver has to focus on other stuff, right? So when you come into therapy, we get together and we establish what your goal is. And then together we explore how you're gonna get there. Everything is based on the information you provide for us. And a lot of the work that we would do with you is based on what your particular experiences have been, like in the past, growing up, all the stuff, right? And then we can tell you, hey, this could be something we might need to look at that could potentially be an obstacle on your journey of where you're trying to get, right? And that's all based on what you tell us. And so you have to be really honest with your therapist if you really wanna get as much out of it as you can. But our main goal really is just to empower you to be the best version of yourself, to help you heal from anything that might be holding you back and give you some tools that you can use to navigate life in general. So that's what we're supposed to do. How are you feeling about things so far? Have you discovered something that you didn't know? Well, let me know. I really wanna hear from you. But let's go ahead and move on to the next one. This one is a big one, all right? I hear it a lot. Uh, I don't need therapy because my problems aren't that bad. We as counselors do not judge you based on how bad your problems are or how serious they are. As long as you're committed to the work and the process of therapy, we're there for you. That's what we're supposed to do. And most of us are pretty passionate about helping people and watching them become the beautiful butterflies that they are. Also, the longer you wait, guess what? Things can become a problem. So it's better to keep up with that emotional hygiene, right? So things don't become a problem. So just keep that in mind if you're hesitant about therapy. Now, before I move on to number three and number four, if you are enjoying this content so far, finding a little bit humor, then make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. Right now, moving on. All right, cool. So we got two. First one I covered was that therapists give you advice. Not true. Another one we have is my problems aren't that bad. Also, not true. Number three. I'm gonna give you a deep eye roll for number three. I don't need therapy because I have my friends and family. Now, I gotta say, congratulations if you have friends and family that you feel like you can count on and that are emotionally supportive of you. I think that's fantastic. I wish everybody had that, right? But the thing is, with friends and family, they're gonna be biased, right? They're going to have a colored perception about what's going on. It's really important to remember that your friends and family cannot usually be very objective when it comes to whatever you share. And also you might feel like you have to hold back a little bit because you might be concerned about how that other person feels. 
Not to mention, sometimes when you're talking to friends and family, it ends up being about them or somehow it turns around and the conversation steers back to something else. Whereas when you go to a therapist, it's all about you, baby, right? We're there for you. You don't have to worry about our feelings. You don't have to worry about what we're thinking. We are strictly there to serve you. Nothing else. That's it. Also, we are trained to be objective and to challenge our biases and to be aware of our biases where oftentimes maybe your friends and family aren't. So that's something to keep in mind if that's holding you back from therapy. Before I move on, if that first question and that answer I gave you tickled your noggin in any kind of way, you're really gonna wanna pay attention to this one because it pertains to couples. But before I get to that one, if you have any other misconceptions that you're aware of or that maybe you had before you went to therapy, make sure you leave those in the comment section because I wanna hear from you, okay? My dog is snoring right now, so if you hear that noise, that's what it is. Stop it. Oh my God, you guys are distracting me. All right, moving on. Misconception number four. Couples therapy is only for couples that are on the brink of divorce. This is not true. Okay. The reason why that's a misconception is because all too often people do wait until things are beyond repair or it's a last ditch effort for them to try to save their marriage or partnership or a relationship. The real truth is it's just like I was saying before, you want to go before it's a problem. Okay. You don't want to wait until things are just too much. A qualified couples therapist that has experience working with couples is going to help you identify unhealthy patterns in your relationship. It can also help you build effective communication skills and give you some tools to help you navigate potential conflicts that inevitably arise when you're in a relationship. So for you couples out there, don't hesitate. You know, if you feel like maybe you're button heads in some way or there's kind of a block in the growth of your relationship, then keep that in mind. You know, you might want to try to nip it in the bud while you can. So you're not like at each other's throats and all the things. And if you want some help with some tips and tricks on how to work on your relationship, then check out this video because it could be helpful. Who knows? Right then. Now, stop. Wait, before you go, I got to tell you something. It's important. All right. Hold tight. I'm watching you. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said that I had a poll that I did that's gonna help me schedule my content coming up. Here are the results of that poll. So, number one is going to be tips on ways to manage anxiety. Number two is going to be questions to ask your therapist. Number three is information on codependency, um, which will tie into number four, which is information on toxic relationships. Now I know there's a lot of information on toxic relationships. It's pretty saturated with YouTube videos and all the things, but some of you might need to hear it from someone else. And that's totally okay, I'm happy to do it. Now, if you have other questions or you have topics you want to hear a therapist talk about, then make sure you let me know. And one more thing. If you watched my Getting Ready With Me introduction video and you enjoyed watching me get ready and put on my makeup even though it was a sloppy job, then let me know because I really had a lot of fun doing that. And if I could do that while I present and give you content, I would love, 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 love to do that. So, um, but only if it appeals to you. I don't wanna be putting out content that's just like, you know, I don't need this, whatever. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Right then, so I hope this was very helpful for you and you were somewhat entertained to some degree. And if you liked it, then make sure you give me a thumbs up. And until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved.